Hi, my name is Israel Solomon, a visiting artist with the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, and I'm excited for another chance to do some art with you all today. Now, before we get started, I want you to think about something. Think about a time where you were in a car or maybe on a bus and you were just driving down the road and you were staring out the window and you looked at some trees and some grass in the sky and maybe some buildings and you just started daydreaming. That's basically what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to create what you call a landscape drawing or painting. Now, in order to do this with me today, it's gonna to take a little bit of patience, a little bit of creativity, and you can use really any materials that you want to. I'm gonna be using a paint stick and I'm going to be using a paint marker as well, but you can use crayons, colored pencils, chalk pastels, markers, whatever works best for you. So I'm gonna show you this picture here. This is what we're going to do. Now this landscape came from my imagination. It's not something that I actually saw. I just thought about it and I decided to create it on paper. And I'm gonna show you guys just how to do that with a few lines and some color. So the first thing we're gonna do in order to get this going is I'm gonna start with my paint marker, a black paint marker. So you at home, you can use um, a regular marker, you can use a black colored pencil or crayon, whatever works best for you. I'm gonna shake it up a little bit to get it going. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a line a little bit into the center of the paper and I'm gonna bring it down. So it's gonna be kind of a wavy line and I'm gonna take it down and you'll see why. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a second line. Now this line is gonna come right from this area and now I have two lines. This is the start of my land right here. I'm gonna create another wavy line, just a little bit above it. And I'm not gonna go all the way to the end of the page. I'm gonna cut it off here. And I'm gonna create another wavy line starting about right here. And what this is doing is it's creating the land. So now I have a good base for my land. And now the top area right here, that can be my sky area. So now that I've went ahead and created my land, you see I've got some waves. It can indicate hills. It can indicate a little forest, really whatever you want it to indicate. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a few little curved lines like this. And that's gonna ind indicate a bunch of trees. I'm gonna do another one over here. And we want it to kind of just be in random places. And the more random that we make it look, I think the more natural it's gonna make it look. And I'm gonna make another little squiggly curvy line right here. Now, if you remember the last one that we did, the last video that I um, taught you guys, we talked about organic and inorganic lines. In order to make things look more natural, it's very important when we're creating a landscape that we're gonna be using organic wavy lines because when you're looking at things in nature nothing is really straight there's always waves curves inside of what you see so now that i've got this nice little base i can decide okay do i want to continue building the land or do i want to move up into the sky i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to make one more little hill right back here i just felt like it needed a little bit more so again, there's no right or wrong when you're doing this. It kind of just goes along with how you're feeling. Um, and I feel like I'm gonna do one more coming this way to give it a little bit more balance, just like so. And now the final thing I'm gonna do before I move into the sky is I feel like I wanna have a sun rising on my landscape. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna create a half circle, just like so. And that's going to indicate my sun. Now, now that we've got this sun and this landscape right here, I'm going to do a little bit of work into the sky. I'm going to go ahead and divide up my sky a little bit with lines. 
we use those organic lines, those wavy lines, those curved lines, and that can indicate clouds, the different variety of colors that we might see in the sky, whatever you'd like it to be. Here's another. And I think I'm gonna create maybe one more on this side to give it a little bit of balance. And I think I'll do one small one just right here and I'll have my whole page filled up. Awesome. So now that I have my drawing completed, I have to start thinking about the colors that I wanna use. Just like when we created the tulip the last time, remember when you're looking at a sky, you might not just think of it as one color. Yes, you could go in and you could take a blue and you can create the whole background as a blue sky. However, remember, there's all kinds of different colors in the skies. Purples, yellows, pinks, oranges, whites. All of those colors can indicate a sky. So think about that as you start to color in. So I'm gonna grab my paint sticks here. And again, you can grab whatever materials that you have at home. And I'm gonna start, I'll go ahead and use blue, but I'll show you that we can use more colors as well. So I'm just gonna start to fill in my sky with that blue. And when you're creating a piece of art, you wanna fill that page up with color from top to bottom. You don't wanna leave anything white. You don't wanna see the paper when you're done. Now I'm kinda of speeding through just so I can show you guys what to do so you may see a little bit of white from my paper. However, when you're doing this, be patient, take your time, and fill up the whole page. So yes, I started with a little bit of blue here, but I'm not gonna end it there. I'm gonna come in with another color I think I'm gonna use a little bit of this pinkish color right here, and I'm gonna add that into my sky as well. Don't be afraid to let your colors mix. It's totally fine. When you do that, you create new colors, and it looks more unique for you. So now I'm coming in, using that pink right on top of that blue, and as you can tell, we're also creating a purplish color when we do that. Right through here where those colors mixed, we have a purplish color. So I'm gonna fill it all up, just like so. We can go into these curved lines here that may indicate clouds, and we can add more colors there as well. I'm gonna go to my purple. I'm gonna add a little bit of purple into those wavy lines. Remember, we can get as creative as we'd like and use whatever colors that we want. Now I'm gonna leave some open space so I can go on top of that purple with more color. The more color and the more variety that we have in our picture, the more interesting it's gonna look. So on top of that purple, maybe I'll use a little bit of orange, just like so. Blend those colors together and see what you come up with. I feel like when you blend colors together, you have a more unique image just for the simple fact that you created a color that nobody else used when you blended that color together. So now we've got our sky going here. I'm gonna go into the sun and I'm gonna go ahead and color that in. I'm gonna start with an orange sort of in the center of the sun. And then as I move away from the center, I'm gonna lighten it up and then I'm gonna grab a yellow and I'm gonna blend those two colors together. So now I have this yellowish color and I'll use that towards the outside of the sun. So the closer to the center, the more orange I have, the further away, the more the sun gets yellow and maybe even white. Now I'm gonna move down into my land here and I'm gonna decide what do I wanna do here? What colors do I wanna to use to represent my land? I'll go ahead and fill those trees in first. So I'm gonna grab a green. 
but I'm not just gonna use green. So there's a little bit of green there. On top of that green, I'm gonna put a little bit of blue. Because trees have all kinds of colors in them. Blues, greens, yellows, browns, and then we know when the fall comes, oranges, reds, and purples, any color you can imagine could be in a tree leaf. And we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna finish the land up. I'm gonna do it really quick just so that I can show you what it may look like in the end. Now I, got, I want you guys and, and girls to go ahead and color all of this in. Again, I'm kind of doing it quickly just for the purposes of time and getting through it a little quicker for you guys. But I want you to really take your time, be patient, and I want you to fill all of that space in. Okay, now on top of my hills and my grass, there may be some rays from the sun hitting, so I can add some of that orange from the sun right on the top of those hills, and that'll help to indicate that there's some sunshine hitting on top of those hills. You can add pinks, blues, whatever you would like, just like so. And then for the final step, I'm gonna go right back to my paint marker, shake it up a little bit, and just kind of go over everything one more time to make those lines stand out more. And then the other thing that you can do is you can create little marks in your land, just like so, to give it some dimension and some pattern and texture. You might want to do a few marks going in the same direction. You might want some going in different directions. And then that'll give it a little bit of like I said, texture, a little more depth. You can even add some dots, whatever you want to do. All right, and then once you get to the end, remember, I want you to make sure that you're filling your whole page in and your project should look a little bit like this. So make sure that you take your time, don't rush through it, be patient, do your best, and you're gonna have great results. I appreciate you all doing art with me today and you have a good day. Thank you. Mm -hmm.